Hey, podcasters. This is a, um, a special edition of the podcast. I mean, I'm going deep here into exactly what's happening now as we're going deeper and deeper into this coronavirus, into this potential world recession. Um, I'm going through some strategies, my diary, what we're doing, what we're changing, the strategy meetings that we're having to overcome this and to, um, you know, to, to, to get through this with minimal amount of damage. So, I, I hope you get some value from this episode. I would love to hear your thoughts. The big question is this. How did I buy over 200 properties and build a multi-million pound property business? Then lose my wife, lose my children, lose my home, lose my businesses and lose my liberty. When I was sentenced to nearly five years in prison for a crime committed by a lifelong friend. Then leave prison with no home, no income, in £175,000 of debt, and then find the courage to start over and build a successful business now doing half a million in revenue in the last 12 months. Now, this podcast will give you those exact tactics, those exact strategies, and the answers. Hey, podcasters. So this episode is, um, well, it's a bit of a different episode today. I mean, I'm, I'm tight for time as well, so I need to be mindful of the time. Um, I've got a couple of meetings online or um, some WhatsApp video calls from um, a couple of couple of people from overseas, some business people where I'm talking to them to get them on the podcast so I can deliver as much value to my audience, to you guys, to everybody watching on social, listening on the podcast, uh, watching on the on the YouTube channel, etc. Because we're going into you know, very, very difficult times now. We're already in the difficult times, but the times um, are very, very um, challenging ahead for, for many businesses small big many families um just you know it's just uh, there's chaos and destruction going on right now you don't need me to be the bearer of the bad news you've seen the news you know what's happening it's only going to get worse before it gets better i mean who knows if it's a world recession it could be who knows if it's going to be as bad as the 2008 crash that you know many of us on here have been through i've been through that one i've been investing in property real estate business since um the year 2000 so i've seen a few cycles okay so it's not new to me it's very worrying very alarming um but it's not brand new to me because i have the the hindsight i have the the knowledge i have the experience i have the scars i have the wounds um of the pain of going through this before 2008 um so and obviously coming out of it and the problems and challenges around 2000 and 2001 as things started to pick up as well. So it's um, it's very difficult for everybody, especially people who don't have the knowledge or experience that have been through this before in the past. OK, so um, to some of those guys, their world is finished. Their world is ending. Their world is crumbling. Everything they built, you know, their families, where they're going to how they're going to feed them, um, you know, not being dramatic. But, um, you know, some of those are, are real issues right now um, because who knows how far this is going to go? Who knows how low um, the markets are going to, to crash? Who knows how where the bottom of the property market will be if that crashes as well and how long it will take to bounce back and who will be there um, to, to rebuild and rejuvenate things um, when this is all over. I mean, who can survive? Who can keep the cash flow going, etc. So those are lots of questions and challenges and things on people's minds that everyone's discussing right now. I'm just going to pour this um, uh, tea. Um, it's jasmine tea. I've gone back into uh, drinking jasmine tea. I went out in the West End the other night, you know, near Chinatown, um, which is sort of a no-go area, some people would say. Maybe it's the safest area to be at the same time. Who knows? Um, but yeah, I went to, uh, went to Chinatown and, uh, to Basabi Thai, you know, fantastic Thai restaurant that me and my partner and family and, you know, lots of us really like and enjoy. And, um, I had the Jasmine Pearl tea and, oh my gosh, it brought some memories back to years ago, um, where a friend of mine called Ming, he owns a Thai restaurant in Bury St. Edmunds and, um, we did launch parties and, you know, different events. And I always used to use him to do the catering. 
he owned uh, two Thai restaurants. I think one was in South End. I never went to that one, and the other one was in Bury St Edmunds, right in the uh, in the town centre. So we always used him for all of the events that we had, the launch parties, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. One of them's on the internet, the launch party, because I actually invited um, Michael Kane to come along um, to to host the event or to have us like a celebrity there. We was launching like a hybrid online agency an online letting agency and guaranteed rental company doing things very differently. Um, and this would have been around about 2000 and 2008. I think this was after that crash. I just scaled one of my companies or a few areas of my companies up, which was online lettings. It was online estate agency and stuff like that. So that was around 2008 in the mar aftermath of the 2008 crash. Um, so yeah, I, I tried to reach out to Michael Kane to get him to come, uh, he wouldn't come, and um, or he said no, politely. Uh, so what I did is I actually drafted in the number one Michael Caine lookalike, right? And obviously being a marketer, being um, a businessman, being an entrepreneur, I was very creative, very careful with the truth, um, stretched it as much as I could without breaking it, and what it enabled me to do was a, like a PR stunt um cool, this is going back 12 about 12 years what it enabled me to do um i'm going off i've digressed slightly so i won't spend too much time on this what it enabled me to do is to get the lookalike leverage the michael kane lookalike to launch the party to be there for everyone hearing the news i got the news involved the news said that he was coming or might be coming and then this other guy was there um uh, the lookalike uh, people wasn't sure they didn't know is it him etc etc anyway then the press came down on the day and did some filming and stuff like that and then he heard obviously michael kane his agency that we used his name very creatively so i actually got a public um rap on the knuckles from his agency threatening to, to sue me my company threatening a lawsuit if i didn't do exactly what they said which was um you know a legal letter um, and they said that there were certain things that they wanted me to do and um, there'll be no further action. So I was happy with the PR, the coverage, the leverage that I got, the conversation, the dialogue, all the drama. Um, I had to do a public reply, which was in the public domain because a newspaper then approached me, um, wanted a story, which was the exact thing that we wanted to achieve. So in the end, it all worked out for the best. Michael Kane, his agency, they were happy. He was happy. Um, you know, and, um, yeah, managed to get some headlines and get in the business section or I'm not sure if they hit the front page of the newspaper, but the local newspapers spun the story and, um, reported on it and it was great PR and coverage, which is what was controversial, but what I needed at the time. Anyway, that's the story about the Thai restaurant, which is how I, um, fell in love again recently. Um, from last year, from this year, sorry, with um, Jasmine T. Now, on to a more serious note. Sorry, I digressed there, guys. Now, it's very difficult times right now for everybody. There's very tough decisions to make ahead for families, for businesses, for everybody. I mean, um, Right now, I've got some calls which are straight after this, which I have to make some very difficult calls. Um, one of them is to, well, there's several calls to business partners. One of them um, is some partners that have some serviced accommodation properties. I've got, I'm um, not sure if you guys, just to give you some background, I've got multiple portfolios in different cities. We're currently in five, I think six cities now we've just gone into with serviced accommodation. Um, and um, I've taken on joint venture partners, been working with them for some time, you know, teaching them, training them, mentoring them, and um, they've been going out and finding their own deals. I've been helping them, answering their questions, um, helping them get the property set up, drafting in my team, stylists, people that do listings, people that are managing the properties and the bookings online, etc. And I've been obviously like consulting with them as an advisor and putting the funds in. So I've been funding them as well. So I've got, you know, various joint venture partners which have their own portfolios which they manage and they share with a holding company which I have, um, the profits. And um, they're just waiting with bated breath, like, what do we do next? Um, you know, they've never been involved. They don't know how this really works. So at this level, 
which is where the problems are, which is when the wheels can fall off. For some people who don't know, which I see all over the internet now, all of these mentors and service accommodation gurus, <laughs> which just makes me laugh. They popped up from nowhere. They've done somebody else's 99 pound course. Now they're their own guru. They spent some money on Facebook ads and now they're like, ta-da! Everybody needs to come to them because they're the perceived to be the best people at it. By talking a, talking a lot or talking a good game, but when it comes down to the numbers and what they're doing, etc., many of them are teaching because they can't do anyway. They haven't been through the 2008 crisis. They haven't seen this before. They're now in uncharted waters themselves, and I don't know if they know what they need to be doing to then teach their people that they're mentoring how they can navigate through this because they've the teacher has never actually been through this unless they did get started over, you know, two weeks ago, and they've been doing it through the earlier crash. I mean, 2008, two weeks ago, that's just, you know. A little joke that some of us have about how long they've been um, in, in the property business. Hey, podcasters, I really appreciate every single one of you for listening to my show. So I want to give you all something back of value for you or your business, because I know that we can all do a little shout out for our business or brand on the next episode now my team is going to pick out the best reviews the best ratings each week and shout that person out on the next show if you want to be that person you know what you need to do head over to itunes leave a five-star review and rating and we'll shout out the best person pretty cool hey anyway so yeah my team are now waiting for some answers from me to say, where do we go now? What's the direction? What's the plan, Ryan? How do we get out of this? How do we weather the storm? How do we keep the bookings coming in? How do we deal with booking.com? How can we stop the cancellations because of the policies on the coronavirus for booking.com and they're refunding non-refundable um, bookings and everything like that. Anyway, so I've got some very tough decisions to make with some of the partners, um, how we're going to uh, you know keep things moving, keep things balanced, keep the cash flow coming in and obviously you know, ride this moment out as best we can um, without putting too much money in, which is a plan. I don't want to be plugging, you know, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 units um, with my own cash. Um, so, yeah, lots of discussing meetings, um, how we can drive this forward, um, which is going to be taking place right after this call. And then there's some calls with um some other partners we're about to start working with in different countries which i'm bringing onto the podcast and deliver as much value for all of my audience listeners everybody watching on the channel or channels right now because right now if you don't move quick if you don't act fast like that if you don't evolve what you're doing and use the different strategies i mean if you can imagine i have a big toolbox or a safe or a chest that you could say or a lorry, probably an Arctic lorry, okay? That Arctic lorry is full up with property investment strategies. When they're working at the time, they're out and they're being used. When they're not working because of the climate, because of the market, because of the conditions, because of the finance or the lack of finance, because of prices rising, because of prices falling, prices stagnating, a bull market, a bear market, a crash, a recession, a credit crunch. There's different tools for different times in different strategies, in different markets, at different points in the cycle. So if you can imagine they're all in that cupboard or they're all in that van or they're all in my Arctic lorry, which is huge. And now I just open the lorry and go back to, ah, oh, look at that. It's not great because of the climate we're in. It's just a different tool, which is exciting to use. It's nothing great about it because lots of people lose their houses in recessions and downturns. Lots of people lose their jobs. Lots of families are struggling. Lots of businesses go under, etc., etc. So it's not anything to be praised or excited about. Um, but I mean, I just go to this vault now. I go to this Arctic lorry and I open it up. And the first thing that I can see are the different strategies, the different tools that now I need to be using. Like for example, um, there's one particular tool which hasn't worked since about 2010, but now it works and now it's rife. And, um, you know, I exhausted that particular tool from about 2008 to about 2011. 
which was in the aftermath of the property crash. So as the market's changing and you know potentially falling, nobody knows how far it's gonna go. Is it gonna be a crash? Who knows? Um, this tool right now is the tool for the, for the time for the climate that many investors won't even know about unless they started investing before 2007 you could say, of 2006, and they won't actually know about this strategy. Might have heard about it, other people talking about it. They might read a book about it and then try to teach some people about it, but they've never actually been in the trenches. They've never actually done the deals. They've never actually had any skin in the game. They've never actually put any money in. They've never actually had the real world knowledge of using some of these strategies, which I'm sharing, or <coughs> excuse me, or will be sharing in another episode of this podcast with you guys, with my team, with my joint venture partners, with everybody that listens to my episodes here, which is now a top rated business and entrepreneurship podcast. I'm really glad about my audience. So now we're strategizing so I can give back to you guys something which will help weather the storm, something which will help for the now, strategy for the now a strategy or strategies that don't take a lot of money to get started. You can start them from home. You can start them with no money. Some of these need no money down and you can acquire property or buy property, control property, secure property, lock in assets now as things are falling or people are accepting lower prices. And then when the market bottoms out and comes back is the time where your profits will go from here to here. So I'm going to be going deeper in another episode, um, just breaking down those strategies that work right now in the market. And my team are putting them together right now. It's Sunday. I'm at home. I'm recording this, um, you know, like last minute episode. Um, I'm going to send it to Adam, my videographer, who does all of the audio and does all of the filming tomorrow or tonight or this afternoon. He'll have it. And then this will be up tomorrow or up by Tuesday or Wednesday at the latest because you guys need to see this. You guys need to hear this. And these oh, that episode is going to be game changing for many of you guys. And I think um, I just want to give you as much value as possible to help you guys weather the storm through this climate. So, um, yeah, just to... Uh, just to let you guys know what else is happening. I mean... Going back to that portfolio that I mentioned earlier, I have um, you know many different portfolios with different joint venture partners, and um, let's talk about the ones that are on Booking.com. We've seen cancellation after cancellation after cancellation after cancellation after cancellation after cancellation after cancellation, after cancellation non-stop now for probably about the last three days. They've gone from here, the average cancellations we get to like here, which is just back-to-back -back cancellations, people canceling their non-refundable bookings and people canceling their um, bookings in advance, you know, because they can within something like 14 days, I think it is, depending on the policy they're booked on, excuse me. So there's tough times happening right now, so we need to get together to strategize about how we're gonna weather the storm and get through this at scale. It's not as if it's just, you know, putting our toe in the water with one property and oh it's not so bad if it doesn't make money or it sits empty for four months for, for argument's sake it could do um it's like well there's five here <laughs> there's 10 there uh, there's 20 here i mean now we're looking at these and these and these and these so can you do this at scale the answer to that is yes but you don't want all of your money to be running out as we're about to go into the spring and summer by propping up these properties. So big decisions need to be made right now, okay. So the numbers are down on that side of the portfolio. Luckily, I have other flows of income, different businesses, different investments, different properties, different property strategies from rooms to HMOs to straight buy to let to professional sharers to student accommodation to booking.com to midterm lets to corporate tenants to um, you know companies that pay way in advance um, to you know a top rated podcast which generates money um, to you know training to the mentorships to the partnerships I have um, to the media company that we're building as well. There's lots of different flows of income. Some bring in more than others. Um, so because of that, 
it enables you to keep moving at difficult times like this. I mean, if you have one flow of income and that takes a dive, then you're in trouble and then the thought process changes and then you're in sort of survival mode and you're maybe not thinking straight and you maybe can't scale and you can't grow things and you can't leverage money from over there and then your cash flow is depleted, etc. That's the problem with only having one flow of income. So luckily, I have multiple flows of income that I've built up um, and um, it's those which are going to weather anybody through the storm who is facing a similar situation, okay? So lots of challenges ahead for lots of people. Um, I've actually self-isolated as well for the last few days. I think we're going to do it for a week or so, me and my partner. We have been out, so I'm saying self-isolating, but we have been out for emergency things like food, um, and, um, and things like that, that we are um, hoarding a bit, not really hoarding, but, um, you know, trying to get a month's worth of supplies just in case. Nobody knows how far this is going to go. I mean, if they follow the other countries and there is a quarantine, or like a lockdown for, you know, one week to one month, you know, other countries have done it for two weeks, etc. maybe a bit more in China, then, um, yeah, what's going to happen with the food? So, yes, we are buying reasonable things, just some tins and some pastas and, you know, some you know, spaghetti and macaroni and you know, long life things that last a bit longer. We're not doing the toilet roll thing. Um, we're doing the very important uh, necessities, um, rice, etc. But keeping it fair for other people as well. OK, shopping around online as well. So we're going out for things like that. But we are self-isolating just to be sure and um, not not taking too many risks. Um so yeah, I'm actually going to put, or I've been compiling um, some strategies for landlords that work right now. So if you're a landlord and you're feeling the pinch, maybe you've got a vacant property or it's about to be vacant or your tenants have given notice or you know, you know that some of your tenants are going to be laid off or that it might happen in the next few weeks or already has happened. Um, so you're going to be feeling the pinch there as well. So we've got some, you know, some strategies for you guys to use, which I will be sharing in another episode for you guys. I'll let you know. So make sure you are subscribed to this podcast. And the second that goes live, obviously you get access to that information straight away. The same thing for some investors, property investors scratching their heads now thinking, well, I bought this property course and I've done exactly what they said. And they told me everything's great and amazing. It works in a rising market, but now what happens? So those guys may be scratching their heads thinking, what do I do now? And the mentors will be like, some of them who know what to do, who are actually real being through this and doing the deals, um, who knows how much they're going to charge these people. You know, Those investors might not have the money to pay those mentors for their mentorship to get them through the difficult, challenging seas that we're all faced with now. Um, so maybe they're just sitting there scratching their heads. So there's going to be something I'm releasing as well in the next few days for investors new investors, beginners, um, you know, seasoned investors, investors that have been in after 2008, they haven't gone through a crash, investors, strategies for investors that have been in before 2008, like when I've been in from the year 2000, so we've been in a rising market, we've been in a flat market, a bull market, a bear market, uh, a downturn, a property crash, then another cycle, etc. So the credit crunch and now the coronavirus, so those investors, there's different strategies I'll be sharing for those guys to keep things moving, increase their profits, secure more property, acquire more assets, etc. in these challenging times. So look out for those. Um, look out for those guys. So yeah, I'll be putting my best training together um, for that as well. I mean, um, it will also help businesses that are struggling, some small businesses, some big businesses that are struggling to help, you know, keep the cogs moving in their company to help them grow to help them keep the cash flow coming in to get them into some sensible investments and different vehicles that are making money and producing good cash flow now um, there'll be some other strategies that i'll be sharing um, which will help um, small and any business really struggling and any any person any body who is looking for another flow of income okay it's very simple from anybody looking for another flow of income all the way up to you know property investors seasoned veterans businesses trying to expand their cash flow build their company or grow their portfolio okay guys now yeah i just wanted to give you a little update what's happening it's sunday the 15th of march i'm just about to go on a few um important calls but i wanted to squeeze this in before at home um just um 
Yeah, before I um, obviously uh, just jump into those calls, I just wanted to record this episode just to give you guys um, a little update what's going on, to stay to you guys to stay strong, to stay safe, to stay educated and to you know to, to 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 keep looking and searching inside yourself and online and where you can with information to find out the best way for you to move forward to protect yourself to protect your company to protect your cash flow to protect your families which is the most important thing right now so i hope you got some value from this episode it was just a quick podcast a little ceo diary that i can give you on this busy Sunday afternoon while my team is sitting down strategizing how we're going to drive things forward and how we're going to weather the storm on lots of different fronts and some new exciting things that we're launching right now um, for you guys, which will help right now in the climate. All of you listening right now, my listeners that I really value and appreciate, everybody watching on the the vlog, everybody watching on YouTube, everybody um, uh, watching these clips on TikTok, etc. So, I really appreciate all of you guys. So I'd love to hear your thoughts on this episode and um, stay safe and um, stay strong. And at the moment, stay away from other people is what they're saying. In these uncertain and difficult times, having the right tactics and strategies at the right time is how anybody gets to secure their financial future. The largest transfer of wealth is happening right now. I want to give you all the resources and the reassurance at no cost that guarantees you will win and profit from the property and economic crash today. Imagine what your business and your life will look like when you use the right tactics and strategies to pull you and your family through these difficult times, which is exactly what these tactics did for me and my clients and my loved ones after the 2008 crash. Now, I completely understand that money will be harder to find, which is why these strategies I'm giving you are no money down or very little money down, so minimal risk, and you don't even need to buy a single property to earn an additional 1,000 pounds plus per calendar month and a five or even a six figure lump sum when the economy bounces back. Today, you can get this training and the advantage for free that the so-called gurus would charge you thousands of pounds for. Just visit www.propertycrashcourse.com so you have all the tools, the tactics, the resources, and the reassurance to keep the cash flowing into your family and your business when you understand exactly how to profit in a property and economic crash. My friends, don't lose your advantage by doing nothing after listening to this talk.